In this video, I'm going to demonstrate connecting to a network printer and sharing that printer through the network to additional clients on our domain. This is server 1 and it happens to be a member server on the domain. And this is server 2. It's also a member server on the domain. My parent partition is acting as the domain controller. Now the first thing I need to do is I need to be able to go in and install that printer on my server. Now there's a couple of ways to do this and there's a couple of ways to even get to these menus. But you can go through control panel and view devices and printers, that's one way to do it. In order to share out a printer on the network you don't need to install any roles. There is some cool stuff if you do choose to install the print services role but you don't need to install the role to make that happen. I'm going to add a printer. And in my case, my printer wasn't found because it wasn't directly attached. It's not hooked up by USB. Uh, so I need to click on this one that says, my printer wasn't found. Now I have a lot of ways to connect up to that network printer. One way that I can do that is simply by knowing its IP address. If it were already shared on my network, I could use this type of uh, URL. But because it's not, I need to set it up brand new. In my case, the printer is 10.4.6.10. And this printer, we're going to query it and let's see if Windows 2012 R2 is able to detect it properly but we know it's a Samsung SCX4725. Let's see what happens. It detects the IP port, which is normally port 9100, which is a common HP Jet Direct port, and then it tries to figure out what model printer that I'm using. So this way it can talk using the proper driver. In this case it did find that it was a Samsung SCX4725 and it chose to use the PCL6 driver. I can say next and it'll install that printer over the network and I'm immediately offered the ability to share that printer. Now I am going to share it but I always like to take away spaces and I like to keep these share names as short as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it as SCX-4725. This way, when I use my UNC path to connect to it remotely over a Windows network, I don't have to type in a long UNC path, or if I'm setting anything up through group policy, I just never have to type in that whole long string. Even though it's very descriptive, the thing that I can key on is the SCX4725 in my case. I could print a test page, but I don't think I need to for this. Now, it is shared out. Let's take a look at some of those sharing properties. Some of these are definitely worthy of changing. Now there's a properties which talks about the hardware and there's a printer properties which talks about the software side of things. Now in Microsoft documentation and um, white papers etc the term printer means the software object in Windows. The actual physical hardware device is called a print device. So if I want to look at the properties of the software printer, including the sharing properties, I need to look at printer properties. There's a sharing tab here, and this is the name I chose to share as. If we look at ports, you'll see that I'm connected over my IP address to that particular network printer. More properly, it would be a network print device because this particular device, this hardware, has a network card in it. I can take a look at advanced and if I wanted to change the driver from PCL6 to PostScript or something like that, I could. I can also change the availability of my printer if I want it only available certain times of the day. There's a few other options I can use including keep printed documents which would allow me to keep in my hard drive any documents that I've printed. This doesn't happen to be a color laser jet printer, so 
there's not really any settings that I need to adjust here but this allows you to centrally manage some of the controls on that print device. One thing that will be pretty important to us is the idea of security. We may not like the idea of everybody printing to our printer. We may want to exclude certain people. We may want to only allow certain people. And we have the ability to do that here, similar to the way that we handle file shares and file security. There's only three main printer permissions that you need to be concerned with. There's the ability to print. There's the ability to manage the printer, which means managing any of these settings in the software implementation of that printer. And there's the manage documents option, which allows you to manage the print queue, including pausing, restarting, or deleting print jobs in the queue. Also keep in mind that the deny permission will trump the allow permission. So if you were to deny everyone the ability to print, for example, nobody could print, even if they earn that ability somewhere else. There's very few cases where you would probably ever want to use deny. Certainly not for groups. And then there's a device settings tab, and this allows us to set any of the installable options for that particular hardware. For example, a duplex unit, uh, a stapler, some of the bigger copiers and printers may have additional features in addition to paper tray, um, lots of different things that can be on here. And you'll want to configure this here centrally so that all of your clients that connect will get those proper settings and will be able to access those additional trays. So let's take a look at connecting to this over the network. You can connect to it a couple of ways, but one way that I find pretty easy is using the UNC path. You can click on the start button and just start typing in the UNC path. In my case, it's server1 backslash scx-4725 because that was the name of the share that I created. See why it's nice to have that short share name? If you ever do need to type it in, it's much easier. And then you don't have to worry about the spaces causing you any trouble either. Now, simply connecting to that UNC path has installed the driver for me behind the scenes and has set this up as a printer on my network. I'm going to jump into control panel over here so we can see the difference. I'll go the same route, control panel to devices and printers. And here's my printer. Notice it says the same thing here for the name, Samsung SCX4725 series PCL6 class driver, on server 1. This is showing me that it is actually a network printer, because I'm connecting over the wire. And you can see that here too. As an administrator with the ability to manage printers, I can manage this printer from here if I wanted to. Back here in the security settings, there's a little bit more that I would like to show you. For example, this creator owner has the ability to manage documents. And you might think, I don't know who this is and I might want to remove it. Well, it's actually kind of handy to have in there. The creator owner is the user account that created that document. For example, if I'm Bob from Accounting and I choose to print, Bob from Accounting would then gain the ability to manage documents for that one print job. Anything he prints, he can cancel, pause, or restart. And that can be handy for a user to be able to manage their own print jobs. So that's a particular option that you might enjoy using. One other thing that we might want to do with printing is we might choose to install the print services role. There's a couple of interesting components in here. Oops, a little too quick. I need to add roles and features. And in this case, I'm going to add the role to my server. And I'm going to add the print and document 
services. From within here I have the option to add in print server which is really pretty much already there except now I'm going to get the print management snap in which is actually pretty cool. This one's going to give you the ability to manage all of the print devices and printer in your entire organization. Drivers, the whole works. And there's a few other resources here for other lesser used services but if you have a need to use internet printing for example printing over HTTP or a distributed scan server you can set those up here. LPD service is used for some Unix based computers or some rather old printers. And then I can install the role. It may take a couple of minutes for that installation to complete but when it does installation succeeds and I can go into tools and use the print management console. This will give us an organization-wide look at our printers. Not only can I see all of my printers, I can see all of the drivers that are installed as well. Any printers that are not ready will appear in this filter, which is kind of handy in case you need to run around and reload paper into some of the print devices or change a toner. And this one will show you any printers that are currently working on any print jobs. So you can know which printers are in use and which ones aren't. Maybe a printer with jobs might indicate that something is stuck in a print queue and doesn't seem to be progressing. That can be a cause for action so you can clear up a stuck print job and get everybody else's print jobs on through. From here you can add in any print servers on your network and you can see them all and manage them all from one place, including any drivers that are installed, printers, ports, and forms that you might use on those. So this utility definitely does a much better job of handling a large organization with multiple print servers and multiple printers instead of having to have every individual print queue open all the time to see the status of those print printers and print devices. So that's pretty much all there is for printing. Install the print management utility if you have a larger environment. But if everything's working well, it's fairly simple with a fairly simple set of permissions to use when sharing out printers on your network.